Welcome back to the last day of Group Stage. Cheers the round robin. He's going to come to a close today here on day number four. My name is Julian Pastry Time Card. Let's check in with the results of the day, see exactly where we stand. We've had three games played so far. High Random beating Saigon Jokers. Detonation Focus Me beating the Chiefs there. And INTZ now beating Supermassive does lock up the top four. INTZ, Supermassive, Cycle Dragons, and Hard Random will be those four teams. I believe seeds still to be determined, and of course, still games to be played today. But unfortunately, our next one is going to be the Chiefs' final game of the International Wildcat Invitational. They'll be taking on Isaris Gaming. And of course, joining me here for this one, once again, I'm very happy to welcome Tim Carvin Wendell, Legacy's Jungle, back into the mix, and Zach Rusty Pie. Still holding it down, sir. It's been a long morning for you. How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm all right. <laughs> it's getting done, but Chiefs are killed, so it's a bit sad. Rip, boys. It is sad, though, Carvin. Definitely sad. Chiefs just got exterminioed by, uh, <laughs> by Brazil. Uh, they played amazing, by the way. Uh, I had super massive picks actually because I thought um, Turkey usually scales towards the end of the tournament, so start playing better and better and better. But uh, Brazil really turned it on. Yep, certainly did. But we are going to have a look at our next match. Of course, it is going to be the Chiefs playing one last time. The only opponent they have not faced yet are the Latin American South side, Isaris Gaming. Definitely an up and down tournament for these two sides. Neither of them, unfortunately, can it make that top four, of course, because we have locked in those slots already. We are going to be playing for pride. And that is honestly important towards the end of a tournament. It sounds kind of silly, but... It is important to, you know, play for pride, play for respect. Absolutely. These two teams um, are not, not going to troll. Not, not whatsoever. I mean, it still means so much to you um, to pick up those extra victories at the end. Um, I, I'm expecting a, a good game still. Yeah, I think that honestly, because they're still even matched on the standings, they're both two and four. They do want to have separation. You don't want to be considered the lower two teams in any type of scenario. So definitely still playing, not just for Pride because he's on La LAS, but definitely for the, all of the Chiefs as well, trying to win. And I wonder exactly what type of game we'll get because we've seen some you know, different stuff. The Chiefs tried to play like a little bit more finesse and did get burnt a bit by the strong team fighting of Detonation Focus Me. I almost wonder with just sort of the trend of the tournament and the type of match we're in, we could have a very fast and bloody game. This is the type of game where if you have comfort picks, if you have picks you want to play, you go back to them now, you just play what you know, and then you're just going with your best bet. Yeah, you just throw out all the plans out the window at this point, I think. I think uh, you just want everybody playing their best champions. I think both sides will do the same thing. Um, I think we're in for a real cracker. You know, it's like game five in a best of five. You kind of just go back yep. to what works for you guys, the fundamentals, the important part. The Chiefs have got a lot of fundamentals that they've been struggling on, but definitely can revert to absolute comfort and fix those fundamentals through that. LAS are the same. Well, let's have a look at the Chiefs, though, because again, the run is going to come to an end here after this final game, but still plenty to play for. Been definitely an up and down tournament for the side. I feel like the biggest thing, and this is true, I think, of the tournament as a whole. Firing as a team is so important in League of Legends, but especially at this level, at an international event. The Chiefs, they've individually had some really good moments. The games they won, though, where they were able to come together as a team and really perform. And unfortunately, even in that last game, it wasn't even one piece that fell apart. It felt like just the team as five could not match Detonation Focus Me 5v5. Yeah, um, the last game was... I'm, I'm not really sure what happened, to be honest, because they played well. They played to their win condition well, and then just when it came time to execute, they failed. So um, that was a pity. Look, I think that the Chiefs are going to have a, a good game this time. I think uh, hopefully they've learnt this wildcard tournament has been all about uh, crowd control. It's been all about who can get the better CC comp, um, and they will generally win, even if they get outscaled or even if the other team has counter picks. Like, as soon as it's both teams group, uh, the one with more CC is going to win. And so yeah. uh, looking for CC from the and Chiefs. And that's why Lissandra and things like that have been very important in the middle lane. Even whilst we look at crowd control and we say that like Nautilus and Maokai, things like that have been really important, they've even been making it work with ranged initiation. So things like Bard and Thresh have been equally as important. But unless you have them all together, you really do start to struggle. And all of these cheeky compositions, the Rise Sivers that generally work for them are not actually working on this stage because they haven't adapted themselves right to what is on offer here. I feel like drafting has actually been pretty punished by a lot of teams here. We saw the Chiefs in their last game pretty much had the option of taking Graves and Lissandra, opted for neither, gave them away. And I think at some point it did cost them because those are champions that are very easy to execute on and have very powerful, especially in this sort of situation. Let's talk about format actually for a second because best of ones, it's very different. You're really challenged to try and win every game as best you can. And we've seen the tournament meta really unfold in this best of one format because you want a way to punish opponents with these more straightforward CC oriented picks. Do you feel like the teams that are losing didn't adapt quick enough to like the mini meta game that sort of developed? Uh, yeah, I do think that actually because <clears throat> I mean, I think Brazil are the only side who have really been able to pull off. Um, like you said, sort of the finesse comp. Yep. They're the only team who's playing nidly well. Um, we just saw a very nice Varus as well. So I think Brazil are maybe the exception, but for every other team, it seems like um, CC is absolutely the answer. And those who are, are who are 
Those who took longer to learn that are the ones who are now at the bottom of the table. Yeah, they reverted to brute force essentially through the meta right now, but you're right, Brazil the only exception. I do think they're like, oh, man, I don't know. I just, I, I'm surprised that no one else can play it because that's all we have been seeing. Mm. Um, I think in terms of best of ones as well, it just makes CC even more that more important because in a best of one, you really need to make sure that you're um, taking every advantage that mm -hmm. you can, right? Like yeah. as soon as they misstep, you need to punish them because yeah. if, if you don't, it's not like a best of five where you can be like, okay, well, you know, they invaded greedily in this game, in the last game. So like this game will be prepared yeah, for there's it. there's no adaptation. That it's, doesn't happen yeah. in the best of one. You need to be prepared as soon as they make that mistake and, and CC is what allows you to do that. And that's the big thing, right? Because all of these regions primarily aren't on best of ones. Like mm. they're all playing in best of series. They come to this tournament and it's almost like reverting back to what they started yep. on years ago and actually having to bring it back to that and be effective once again. It takes longer for some teams. I think honestly it's kind of explains why Detonation Focus Me have had such interesting isolated games. They've had a lot of good attempts. I've obviously have not been able to make the top four but a strong win there versus the Chiefs. They've shown some really interesting games because they do still play in that format. They were undefeated at home in the regular season and I believe through their finals as well and you could just see every game they're like okay like reset, try a new comp, do something different but again a bit more in format because again we're expecting these two teams to kind of come out swinging and have some fun in their final game here if nothing else. Let's think about the playoffs that we'll get to because that will be best of five single round robin like you guys have mentioned no room for adaptation here do we expect things to change once we do see teams get to play each other in these longer series because they should be used to best of fives as well and that will be very different absolutely i think um i think we'll see the the top four meta be very different to um what the round robin meta was and i think that uh we're going to see different teams play very very well in the in the best of fives you know um we kind of looked at like hard random, for instance, as the best team in the round robin, but whether or not they'll be able to translate that to a best of five um, is yet to be seen. And this is why I like tournaments like this, because you're thinking about it, single games, they may not be ideal for every single team, but what it shows is that those who adapt quicker are the most successful. And when you look at MSI, you look at Worlds, things like that that these teams are qualifying towards, patches are usually released just before the world starts. So the teams that adapt will perform better at these, and we've seen... LGD is an example, not adapt at all and actually struggle on the world stage. So whilst it may not seem like it's the best or most ideal scenario, those that are doing well in it, those that are adapting the best are our best chance at the next tournament that they go to. What about reverting back to some of those picks perhaps? Because that's the other thing. We look a lot at like uh, Siva, Rise, Braum has completely dropped off the metagame, at least in the run, Robin. Do you expect to see more of these like standard picks? Or do you think the teams are just are used to the engage and still want to play that? I mean, who knows really? Because you can't adapt now on those longer series. But I'm curious if you think the strong picks will come back or if the tournament meta is going to hold a little bit of what it's had already. Um, look, it's tough to say. Um, but I definitely think that the tournament meta will change. I think that in the best of fives, we'll see a lot more things like uh, Braum. Mm -hmm. um, that got dropped, I think more Siva. I mean, we have seen a bit of Siva, but definitely hasn't been, you know, number one priority. I think we'll see more, uh, uh, probably a little bit less Liss, I think, and um, more Rise, yeah. um, those sorts of things. Uh, more Azir probably as well. Yeah. Champions that were good and then Braum was counted to. Like, it's come full circle, mm. essentially. I think we'll go back. Well, we'll see how this draft goes, because the Chiefs and Serious Gaming will play, I believe, their last game. Chiefs definitely their last game. I think maybe ISG have one to play, but we'll check out the bands here. Karma, Azir, and Maokai for the Chiefs. Going to be taking those away as Nidalee and Callista with the one to go there for Isurus. What's interesting about Isurus is generally they only play two threats. So what we've been seeing a lot of is the tank top with the carry jungler and then your mid lane and bot lane threat as per usual. But Isurus are big fans of like the Gragas um, <coughs> and uh, I would be surprised to see uh, a Graves. Well, there's an Echo, but swipe has got a big smile on his face. It is his birthday, by the way. Hey. And it is his, so happy birthday, Swiper. He is But we joked about it before. Them, yeah. Like this, he does it every game because he loves hovering the Trindomir. But if there's ever a time to play Trindomir, it's probably on your birthday when you've got nothing to lose in your tournament game. I'm not saying you should do it. Oh, they take Poppy. Never mind. Okay, no Dream Maokai crushed. on the table. No Maokai on the, take, on the table takes the Poppy. I mean, Trundle is still up, but uh, with a QSS, Poppy should be fine. So I, I think that's a pretty good pick up. Yeah, I agree. Sad. Sad times. But we'll have to wait. <laughs> He's only done it once, I think, in a competitive game. It was a win, if I remember correctly. It was a win. Yes, it was, actually. It was, it was against me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Nope, I remember <laughs> Sorry. That. I do actually remember that. That was, uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, I've great. forgotten until now. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for that, Jules. All right, 30 seconds now for ISG. And they'll pick their first two here. We'll see what they respond to with the uh, current bands and picks as they are. Poppy taken away. Always a nice one. I'm expecting Ali Gragas here. Um, Ali, because obviously it's very high priority for the Chiefs, but it's also just very good support. 
and Gragas just because it's up and this guy has been playing Cla this guy sorry Kletos <laughs> has been playing uh, a fair bit of Gragas well maybe up towards the Graves but we'll see gonna stick oh, to what he knows no okay. Nautilus Alistar instead uh, here we go straight back to the new new Vlad mm. they won't be playing this interesting player. that you would take the Nort I mean I guess you can fl flex the poppy support but Mm, anyway. Yeah, and they revealed what the Nautilus is doing as well, like 100% top laning yes, with that. Yes. So. so I guess they're afraid of, of the Poppy Flex and then Chiefs take Nord and then, you know, he's left with no tanks to play, but... Um, yeah. It's interesting. It is. To see what the Chiefs do on a pick here. Spooks hover over the Graves. It's Graves Garen. I imagine Coach Chiefs has some strong words for these picks. I mean, we did see the Vladimir earlier today. Uh, did yes. quite well. So, you know, maybe not so troll <laughs> after all. <laughs> I hope it's not competing with the Nunu again, though. <laughs> That's my only request. No! Move speed is good on Vladimir, that blood boil. <laughs> so I've heard. Not again. <laughs> Ten seconds left. Okay. There's Siva. There's Siva Graves, yeah. Those okay, are the lock ins. Well, Chiefs have waited till they couldn't make it anymore to start playing Graves, um, which is a shame, but uh, let's see what it looks like. Well, Spooks had it one game, I think, at least in the tournament, which did look that good. That's true, actually. But yeah, you're right. I feel like it was just open, and Spooks was still preferencing a lot of the older picks he was playing. You know, yeah. Nidalee Kindred, who are strong junglers, but we've seen Grave just be so dominant, particularly in this tournament, because of how the how the sort of meta game of the tournament shaken out. Mm. Uh, the Siva pick up as well, which is uh, nice. Siva is just a strong AD carry. Um, I was mentioning earlier that Radia kind of suffers on immobile carries, and that is all that rings true for. Su uh, Swiffer for Siva, <laughs> um, but I think uh, I, I'm expecting something like the Siva rise again. I mean, it's strong. It's a strong combo. It didn't work for them that time, but uh, we'll see. Well, there's Kindred and Lucian as well for ISG. So pretty nice stuff there. Lucian Kindred always nice. Very surprised actually that the Chiefs have stayed so far away from Lucian, mm. who's been very popular this tournament long. But I think Radio again, a bit more of a utility carry player. Does like his Siva. Does like his Callista. And it did play Ash in the finals as well, so kind of maybe not as uh, and they polished. The, they played the one game of Lucian, I think, against uh, it was uh, Saigon Jokers, I think they yep. played against when they played Lucian, and he got destroyed. So I can see why he may not be memory. in a hurry to pick that one up again. Um, but Lucian's uh, Kindred, very standard. The Graves is taken away. Kindred's still very strong. Um, two strong carries to go with their front line. Yep, and there's maybe Ejim with the Blitzcrank. Wouldn't mind that as a hmm. odd Lucian counter, perhaps. It would be a nice Kindred counter. That's true. Just punch him. Oh, grab the real technology. Out. No. Okay. Unlocked. It's LeBlanc and Trundle instead. And what's nice about this is that they can flex this pick until the 30 second mark, yep. right? Um, uh, Nort won't know who he's up against. And to be honest, both matchups are good for the Chiefs. So, uh, yeah, and Trundle into the Nautilus as really well. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, really strong draft from the Chiefs in terms of the top plane matchup. Um, blind pick LeBlanc. Not entirely sure about that one. We did see the Cassidy and Hover, and that wouldn't be good for the Chiefs. But um, look, we said play comfort. He had to blind pick something. Um, LeBlanc is mobile, does have pick potential, so not entirely bad. Always surprises me how long it takes Swift to go back to the Assassins, but he's going to go back now. Mm. And take that LeBlanc into battle. Hurley and Soul will be hovered. He is uh, enabled for the tournament. But I haven't seen anyone pick him up just yet. I wonder if Isra is a fancying a go. Because it is late in the event. But I'm not too sure. Give him a few more seconds to sort things out. Oh, it's mm. Lulu. We haven't seen Lulu at all, really. I think we had one game. Maybe. Which still surprises me. Because Lulu is by no means bad since the changes. It's a small nerf, but I think you need to have a composition that suits it. Otherwise, it's not worth it. It is. It is. A, it was only a small nerf. However, I don't think she's very good into what were the meta mids. You know, mm -hmm. she's not great into list. She's not great into Azir. Um, yeah. She's not great into Rise. Um, so she doesn't have, have many good matchups here. What I do like about it is that it counters the LeBlanc a little bit. Yeah. You know, she's going to be able to keep her Kindred and her and her Lucian alive. Um, Kindred also very good. Very good for that. They do have Nort Alt as well for LeBlanc. So I don't think Swift is going to be able to just run in and kill whoever he likes. Um, Conversely, uh, this is going to set up Lucian really well to carry. I think if uh, Lucian get a good lane phase against Siva, he's relatively good against Siva in lane. We'll see whether or not they swap. But if they can find the 2v2 and Lucian can get a lead, I think Isaris, um could definitely win with this Lucian-Lulu comp. It also sticks to the two, uh, two carry threats that this team seems to preference as well. Yes. You mentioned normally do it with jungle, uh, jungle playing tanks and yep. mid going uh, more of that aggression, but this time instead it's more of a supportive mid laner with the actually full carry jungler really on Kindred. So sticking to the plan here for both sides here. Chiefs don't go too off the rails with the draft, 
But uh, no fun for swipe. I love it. It's the never die Lucian because there's the kindred ultimate with the Lulu. It's going to be glorious. And that's the thing. Like, Lucian is good enough with those sort of champions because of how mobile like he does. He is short range, but he does so much damage when he's able to just freely hit people. This is probably the best way to enable that. We've seen lots of teams get burnt by Lucian's damage, it feels like, because even late game, he can just go off. Well, with the uh, double lifesteal build, um, uh, Mercurial's BT, uh, he's really good against tanks. Um, he's quick. He's mobile. He has the move speed from his W. He has the dash. And with the CDI, his dash is constantly up. So, uh, And with the double lifesteal, the tanks can't actually kill him, uh, particularly when he gets his uh, Grievous Wounds, his um, Last Whisper. Yep, Mortal uh, Reminder. Mortal Reminder, that's the one. Um, particularly when he gets that item, he'll be very, very strong against the Trundle and the, and the yep. Poppy. Um, so I think that's why uh, one big reason Lucian has been uh, so great. Well, it makes a lot of sense. Thanks once again, Carbon, for joining us here on the desk. Been lovely to have you here in the week. Looking forward to seeing you more as you move into top four. But we are going to get this game underway. Chiefs here with their last game of the tournament. Fortunately, playing for nothing but pride. But it is still important, Rusty. We'll see what Isterus Gaming can get done here. There's another five-man away from the Chiefs. I do like this a lot from them, actually. They've been moving much more aggressively into the jungle just to get some vision down, really trying to force the lane swap or scout it out just a bit more, whereas a lot of teams were blind lane swapping pretty much all tournament long. Yeah, just getting vision is something that was sorely underrated at the beginning of this tournament, and now they're starting to work their way into it. It is almost a case of too little too late, but they had it going last game as well. One thing I did want to note, however, is how damn happy they are in those player cams, which is always good to see. Yep, it is important for the Chiefs to keep morale high. So it never feels good to be out of contention for top four in a tournament, but... The Chiefs start to be happy with their performance and they will have to go out smiling here, which is always the best way. Mr. It's Gaming, though, still plenty to play for on the Pride side as well. We'll see what they, what they can get done here as neither team, unfortunately, has had the best tournament so far. But always good to go out strong. As, uh, EGM and Radio are going to group things back up. They'll start on these Krugs and we are going to get standard lanes here. In fact, Zykro is looking for somebody. Not he wants see the big though. one, I think. Oh, he does have a ward, you're right. Yeah. He's only got a Q though, so it's going to be hard to snipe it. Yeah, I wasn't sure if he started W or not. Yeah. Maybe that was just me that thinks like that, you know, for particular reasons. Naturally, <laughs> the, the Lucian, not going to be able to find it. Cute idea though. Very cute idea. Yeah, I like it. You can try to hang out, then make a misstep. Maybe you get in there. It's like uh, Swiper and Pride though. And uh, Swiper is on the Trundle, important to note also. Let's see if he can uh, really... Take a reasonably good matchup for him and start to bully because Swiper has not had the best lands so far. Despite when he does get ahead, he usually does well. Trundle's probably a good pick for that. There's Egypt on the poppy, one of his favorite supports. He was a big proponent of this when it first came out, and then even now it's even though it's dropped off a bit globally and even locally in the OPL, Egypt was still playing it. And we saw Doge yeah. obviously do work with it. We saw Doge handle Chiefs with that, yep. to say the least, but definitely still a carry style of support. As is Trundle in the top lane, if they were to flex it and have him support, Trundle's still very carry-oriented as well. And that's the cool thing about the Chiefs comp, and that's what separates the Chiefs from Isarus Gaming right now, is all of them can do damage yep. in their own right. And here comes Egypt. He's going for a very sneaky level 2 gank here. Can leave ready to his own devices, and here we go. Oh, spotted out though, EMP. Not buying that one. It's actually blatantly obvious as well, if you have a look at the way Radar was positioned in the bottom lane. He was hiding next to the bush, and he's like, guys, I have my support with me. Do not walk at me, but I am not <laughs> farming minions. I swear I am safe. Well, Medium does have to return, but I like the uh, aggression regardless. Claytos, though, will pick up the mark on the top side, Scottlecrab. As Medium does return, wax a minion. Gets that proc for a bit of extra health, and here we go, straight into the wall. Newbie going to take good damage. Nice boomerang blade comboed in as well. This is the sort of lane where Medium and Radiant do feel pretty comfy in, but do have to be careful of the potential trade from Lucian and Ali. I'm curious of what the communication was between Isurus Gaming's top laner and jungler because that was a scarily predictable timing on walking towards that top lane gank. Everyone wards at three minutes if they have room to ward that bush. If they don't have room, generally they're too pushed in to be ganked in the first place. So, very curious to see him reveal himself Whoa. and give this information. Really did it again though. Zyker gonna get aggressed on by Ejim, but a spell shield. It is difficult to spell shield Lucian Q, but Got to get those reflexes sharpened back up. Spooks is now looking mid lane. Yeah, big raid air. Really been struggling with those spell shields. Every single Lucian that we've seen has been hitting them time and again. Oh, this is good. Locked Spells down. Spooks is in. Damage is good. End of the lines there. EMP forced to flash, but the ignite will give first blood to Swiffer. They locked down that first blood in the middle lane once again. Spooks changing things up. Reverting back to what works for them. And that is 
camping the Swiffer. Especially when Swiffer has an assassin. It's nice to see them back at it. He is a bit like a vacuum for kills though, isn't he? Yes. <laughs> Old Swiffer. Well, TP is going to keep EMP actually pretty healthy as far as overall CS goes. Going to pick these up and even things right back up. But of course that first blood going to LeBlanc could spell problems for the Lulu. Fiendish Codex there for Lulu right now. We'll see what Swift wants to go back and get. It is aggressive. Abyssal first, but he grabs the Blasting Wand. Yeah, got the Blasting Wand with the Null Magic Mantle. So still a bit of resistance. And even compared to EMP, who's not going that route at all. I would imagine that he's going towards the Athene's Unholy Grail. Very but nice. still, he's gone the aggressive part first. Very nice there from Newbie. Could also be Frost Queen's claim. Seen a bit of that, I think, in the tournament. Yeah, I'm still not a big fan of it. I'm not either. Like, Lulu got nerfed. It got nerfed. Buying it on Lulu is like double nerf. It doesn't make it good. It makes it just as bad. Yes, correct. Those things don't add up the way you think. There's Kletos and EMP. Wandering a little bit around the red side of the jungle. This is not maths. It's not. Two negatives do not make a positive in League of Legends. Makes two negatives. <laughs> they stack. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And Spook's back mid lane, but this time he's straight on top of a ward, so EMP not going to be fooled this time. I'm not sure that means I'll tr not try for it, though. I like know? how EMP is playing, but it's risky. So if he plays up, Spooks will stay. He won't recall, and that's a lot of time wasted where Kindred can either come to counter gank, but it's dependent. Oh, chain lands in. Second chain's in as well. EMP moving in, but Spooks is already here. Swiffer, though, is going to get the next kill. Egypt's also up, and there's Kletos into the wall. Damage is down. Level 5 Kindred's burning, and Spooks gets another. And that's the exact downside that you don't want to see. Swiffer hitting both chains was very clutch right there, and Spooks puts down the burst. And whilst he was baiting them in EMP, keeping Spooks nearby, the risk is that you die. Yep, and that's what happens. Egypt also there. Really tips the scales in the Chief's favor, and they're going to do massive damage to this turret. Newbie and Zekro are here down now, but I'm not sure they have enough for it. Ejim is going to block the alley up with a W. They won't get the turret, but Swiffer starting to really get on a roll, and as you said, it just feels like good old times once again. Yeah, Swiffer and Spooks, 2-0-1-1-0-2. Holding their hands all the way to victory was the old name of the game from Chiefs. Things have changed recently, however, and even Ejim being there is... Oh, Ejim is so you cheeky adorable. devil. Straight into the wall. Oh, Boomerang Boy follows in as well. Big damage there. That's actually going to flash in right here. Spell shields to some of the CC, and now Swift is in there. Should be able to get it, but the flash is good. Swift, though, going to flash over and queue down for another kill. Yeah, this is flashbacks to the old Chiefs indefinitely, especially that LeBlanc on Swiffer rotating around the map to help his team, and it's on the back of Ejim. Catching them up against the wall. 4-0 now for the Chiefs against Isaris Gaming. And you can see Spooks. Everyone very happy in the player cams, like you mentioned already. Swiffer back and Assassin certainly feels like home for the side. 4-0 in seven and a half minutes. Two and a half thousand gold up already. And you have to feel like the train is not stopping anytime soon. Swiffer, he just looks so comfortable on Assassin. And irrespective of anything else that's happened in this tournament, this is the Chiefs that we've been sorely missing. And it makes you wonder, with the fact that they're now eliminated, if they feel like there's nothing on the line for them and they play with such confidence that you would imagine it was capable beforehand. Well, it was, but instead we'll just see how this game works out. Certainly, again, winning is important for both sides here. You're playing for morale in a lot of ways. Want to keep those smiles on the faces right until the end of the tournament. Spooks and Swiffer, though, can pair it once more, this time just for a blue buff. But Swiffer is awfully strong at this stage of the game. Does need to spend the money that he's earned. EMP has gone back for a second Doran's ring. And Spooks is now topside. Team at Trundle starting to do work here, but Spooks wants more. Yeah, Trundle not too tanky. I mean, Nautilus rather. Oh. Pride does make it to the tower though. Smoke screen and pillar not enough, but good little chunk of damage. And Spooks should be able to push in for some turret damage as well. Nautilus is not afraid. Oh, they want to dive at Kletos is here. There's the ulti out onto Spooks, but Swipe is pretty massive. Good, good ulti there, but responded well Swipe by Kletos, dead. and that's going to be the kill out onto the Trundle. Very good counter gank by Kindred. Yeah, well done from Kletos. He bides his time with the very obvious knowledge that Spooks is there, given that he was in lane hitting the Nautilus, but just on time, he uses that ult, drops it down, keeps him healthy. Well. Looking good there. Spooks will actually stay for the wave here. I think he's going to take some of these creeps, but pull it back. Make sure Swiper gets the uh, Swiper gets those. He might even be able to walk up there and save that TP as a result. Swiffer though, continuing mid lane. Does have the Abyssal now finished with a pair of boots as well. Going to look to get out of his lane and maybe back towards bottom side. Siva looking pretty strong with all sorts of AD built up, and that's a lot of pings. I think that's Swiper. 
Yeah, they'll swipe at telling, <laughs> telling spooks, spooks to, to get, get out. off the way. <laughs> yeah, he stayed for another wave and pushed it in. Scumbag spooks, your jungler, mate. Well, here we go, Tardov in the bottom side, but ICU will TP in. Swift for those straight onto Zykra and it's to proc another one there. Egym gonna lock him down as well. The buckler's thrown in, the ignite's good, and Swiffer gonna shut down that culling with an auto. Now Swiper continuing to move in onto Pride, who did TP in. EMP's around the side as well. But Swiffer wants more. Claytos has found Radia. Radia's gonna try and do battle with the Kindred, but Kindred absolutely gonna win that little AD carry battle. And now Swiper getting knocked around. ISG starting to fight back. Yeah, they definitely have some bark and bite behind them, ISG. Spooks was top lane for no particular reason, but he's here now. He's busy taking creeps there. It was actually the ulti's down, but a good exhaust going to keep him safe. And Spooks is forced to flush over that tree. That was fair enough from Spooks, I suppose. He thought he had the kill threat. Of course, he has the challenging smite available to him, and he got an abundance of farm from that top lane. Dragon, however, I don't think should be taken by SG. That's a risk. Yeah, Swoofer's here as well. Spooks going to force them off it. EG moving here looking for some CC. The Chiefs will force them away. Maybe a fight's going to break out here. Because Super's sort of caught out of position. Chiefs have to be careful that they don't get collapsed on trying to pincer. But Swiffer does walk himself out pretty casually. It's going to burst Nubu probably. Yep, chain down. Ulti's there for our star though, so no need to commit. I actually do clear the pink ward and actually going to group as five strong, trying to knock down this mid lane. Yeah, that's a lot of members here, and Swiffer's not able to safely wave clear against an Alistar. Oh, actually got pulverized. There's the ulti as well from Nautilus. You called it, not safe, but he does actually get out. He's lucky to be alive because of LeBlanc's passive turning him invisible. Tower stands, though, and they get one in the bottom. Not a big enough wave, it seems like. Radio able to get the tower down in bottom lane. He's good news there for the Chiefs. They'll actually continue up in gold here, about 3,000 gold ahead now. Very bold from Swiffer, who now goes back and gets himself the Sork Shoes. He absolutely should have died there as well. I can't believe he lived. I uh, can't believe it. I can't believe it either. But he does live to tell the tale this time around. It's actually worth a lot of gold. So it's probably a good thing that he didn't go down. And look at Swiper, working topside here. Teammate already ready here. He's trundle just so happy, and it only gets better. This creep wave does not exist. Chiefs looking to, to take another tower this time in top lane. I've always wondered of all things why the subjugate, or the W rather, I forget what it's called, the land of filth that he just places down. Oh, struggle for pride. Ejim going to get the stun down. Just some damage though. Nord looks pretty tanky right What's now. What's it called? Frozen Domain it is now. Really? It used to be something else. Yeah, yeah sorry. Just I was contaminate, I think. Yeah, okay. There you go. Damn name changes. Oh, run. Right here. EMP can't quite close them off though. Does use a silver ulti to get himself out. Takes the mid turret as well. It's a pretty impressive stuff, although Kletos is going to pick up this dragon. No devourer completed just yet. Doesn't mean that the stacks will go missing as Swiffer might even collapse for this one. 2v3 right now. Yeah, he's got a devourer. Oh, stealing it. He does get it. Really, Swiffer? Oh, Swiffer's. he does too. You're right. I saw a dagger and I assume. That was like an auto attack and a Q, I think, from Swiffer at best. Might have just been the auto attack, but locks it down. So, yes, no five stacks to Kletos. The Maybe. dragon was the right idea. Made a lot more sense when I was trying to take it as well, yeah. so thank you. But uh, still, from no Swift, we'll actually people. deny that away. That's very cheeky. It's the Chiefs, 5-3 up in kills, and now a dragon to boot, with three towers being the real big news here. They are crazy far ahead in gold. 6k up at 13 minutes in. Yeah, it's pretty unreasonable. There's a lot of farm in advantage of Raid Air, because he is essentially a siege engine. At the moment, he's doing nothing but hitting towers and minions on their way to towers. He's 50 CS ahead of Lucian. He's playing an MMO. That is a lot. He kind of is, yeah. PVE. He's the new jungler. Spooks is the new AD carry. He yeah. needs to get level 12 for his sick new gear. <laughs> <laughs> well, a few levels off, unfortunately. Weirdly appropriate. <laughs> so far, there's a nice aggressive pink ward there. Just looking to make picks at this point, but he's going to move back to mid laning. Keep that farm up. Pride looking for something here as Kletos goes to join him. On the top left-hand side of the jungle, looks like red buff is up. Kidra going to go ahead and take that one for ISG. Swiffer and Spooks once again grouping up, just trying to find a pick. Yeah, no, they're going to do this. No, nope. they're not. Oh, wait. I'm Okay. Yeah. Sick. I'm not sure about that <laughs> one. I think, yeah. I assume that was... Headbutt the wall, use the other one because you think you're already over there, and then get over the wall and surprise is now gone. Spooks is out. Yeah, locked up. He's going to dash out of the way, uses the ulti to create some distance. Claytos actually getting crit. Swiffer's going to lock him down. Lamps just fights there, but they can probably take him down now. He's invulnerable still for a little while longer. The Ignite's down, and Swiffer is going to claim him. 
And the Swiper's just going crazy as Ejim's going to battle Pride now, but Swiper is huge on the troll. Ejim's in trouble. Ejim's going to eat the ulti, but the heal's going to keep him alive. Pride now going to get knocked back here. He does actually take out Ejim, but he's going to fall for it. 2-1 there, Chiefs with a good trade. 2-1, but a lot of blinking health bars on the side of Isurus Gaming, so the Chiefs with this minion wave should be able to siege it down, even gifting Radius some mana. Because I'm not sure that they're done just yet. They want to get what they can, whilst they can. No need to stop. Chiefs potentially here to break the base very early on, but don't overcommit for it. Swiffer again. A little too hyphy on the old LeBlanc distortion. I think hyphy sums them up nicely right now, pastry time. They are absolutely hyphy. Well, no fear at this point of the tournament. 8k up, though, is a huge lead for the Chiefs. So look to bring it home, at least with some panache. Radia, again, his favorite game. What of Leecroft. <laughs> Happily farming away. What of Radio? How about that? Yeah. Sakura so gonna answer here, but. Radio of Legends. <laughs> and mini wave gone. Swift there in his back pocket just in case. In fact, there he goes. He's even going to find Newbie though. That's probably not the bad pick, but Zycro probably going to go down to Swift. But Swift is going to face tank the culling. Needs a few more autos. Radio flashes in to steal it. And now a teleport in for Isurus. Pride, he's going to lock down Egypt, but here's the counter TP from the Chiefs. Egypt trying to get out of the way, but he's taking too much damage. He is going to go down as Kletos takes him out, but Swiper just straight in there. Smashing people with his club. He's going to try and 1v1 the jungler, but a double kill there for Kindred. As Spooks can't get the ulti either. Everyone's flashing over walls. Spooks goes in. Spooks. <laughs> Not enough. <laughs> oh, just Spooks wasn't even there at the start of the fight, right? Like, look at all of the pings <laughs> coming down on the map. The Chiefs are really confused with their jungler and wondering where the heck he was. I think that may have been Swiffo informing Spooks of his current positioning. I believe that is, generally speaking, <laughs> Swiffo, yes. I would imagine based off there being at least 15 of those pings, it's probably more. That's true. Than just Swiffo. It is, you know, minimap pinging is a team effort, you're right. Middle Absolutely. It's a team game. It does cap you, because it'd be unfair if it wasn't. Swiffo also going to go ahead and take the blue buff. So, Spooks not quite on top of it as far as uh, pathing around the map goes. <laughs> Been on the wrong side twice now. Kletos has been blazing around the map, though. Yeah. Absolutely like everywhere. He's been good. 4-2-0, and zero actually, for the Kindred. Could be enough to try and pick something up here. So for the top side, looking for Pride. That's a pretty big someone to try and kill. Swiper, they're going to strip his resistances down with the ultimate. Although, here's an answering TP from EMP. Pride, they're already dead. Now EMP is going to get chased down because Ejim has made his way up as well. Ejim looking for the wall, smashes him into it, but a good flash from EMP is going to prevent that. Chains now Newbie are locked up, chains are good, but the ulti's out there for Ali. Now Spooks is in. Oh, into the tower! It's a disaster! Spooks! Ulti's in the air, that doesn't do anything! Kratos gets another kill, the Mimic goes down. Fifth kill for Kindred. Yeah, they're getting heaps of kills. Swiffer's not done oh, though. Oh, Newbie, that's maybe a kill, but the Wild Growth's going to keep him alive. Ejim going to try and get the assassination down. Does pop the ulti in, but Lantus bites down to heal him. Swiffer still moving in, gets the distortion in. Massive damage there on the back line. Is that three kills for the Chiefs, including a double for LeBlanc? Yeah, they get a double assassination on a Swiffer. They're now going to siege the turret in the top lane. Raider is continuing his PvE he's ways. He's not left bottom lane. He loves those minions down there, but it makes sense when he's playing Sivir. I'll forgive him for one time only. The Chiefs are still commanding in this game with Dragon in 30 seconds. They'll probably just go grab that one. Yeah, huge gold lead here. 10,000 gold up in the lead. Swiffer once again wants it. He's going to combo in onto Pride. Another great chain lands in. Good poke damage there. This Nautilus is really not very tanky. And Swiffer, if he had hit that, I think that was another kill. Potentially was, yeah. Swiffer's doing a lot of damage. And he's about to buy a lot of items, I would imagine. Given how many things they just achieved, it'd be at least the Morellos. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, and an EDC large rod on top of it also. Massive power for this LeBlanc, who's 8 0 and 2. Again, Assassin Swiffer, where were you for the rest of the tournament? But glad you showed up now. Eating with a big grin on his face. He's having a whole lot of fun on the poppy. That much I can promise you. <laughs> yeah. I think it's safe to say they're all enjoying themselves right now, and it is good to see them happy, given that they are eliminated. Isaris Gaming are still holding on for dear life through the grasp of Kletos, primarily. And remember, they've got the Lulu composition as well. As frustrated as they may be by the Lulu's build, <laughs> we are still seeing a kindred who can be amplified further throughout this. Tools are certainly there from ISG, but Chiefs with momentum. Going to put that ward down, look to siege it. Oh, this is dangerous for Newbie. 
Ethan says no. Zyker is here though, but Swift is up in his back pocket. There he is, straight in there. Zyker is like, absolutely not. But a good pulverize there. Swiffer does go back to his original W. Ward stays though. Chief's protect the objective. <laughs> Primary objective saved. Bit of health missing, however, on the Swiffer, so he needs to show a bit more caution. Not that he will. No, absolutely not. Agent flashes in, looks for something, doesn't get it, but the tower does go over to Chiefs, who have six turrets to zero right now. Roof Tower goes back to his home. The Chiefs could look for Dragon here, but ISD are actually trying to cause a flank here. Swiper busy topside, getting work done with Titanic Hydra and Iceborne already done. Yeah. The Chiefs in this bottom lane are just proper clowning to try and keep them busy right now. Swiper's going to put in work if he does not get contested in that top lane. And Swiffer, that was close. That would have been a no, kill. No, that mind. is a kill. Spooks with a nice snipe there. And Kletos, I don't think he had his ulti anyway. But there's Heating going to try and zone them off. The Chiefs are going to break here in the bottom half. Tower is going to fall. Needs one more auto. Come on, Radiant. There we go. Graves handles it. And this inhibitor looking awfully vulnerable as well. Looks like it will go down. ISG. No response right now. Spook's going to chase away the mid laner. So 20 minutes in to have like an 11k gold lead is nearly unreasonable. Swiper's not going to stop in that top lane as long as Chiefs are in the bottom. Newbie looking to make a play though. Could be a little dangerous. Here's Swiffer once again. Locks down EMP with another nice chain. While growth is used, there's a two chain coming in. Swiffer legendary. 9-0-3. Yeah, putting in work LeBlanc right now. And it all stems from Spooks being mid early throughout that game. Then translating that lead to the rest of the map was Swiffer. The jungle was their domain. Marina and <laughs> Fair enough. Was <laughs> taking the towers. So I had to burn his ulti to get out, but does successfully do so. Chiefs are going to continue to break here. Spooks is just straight into the back line. Helps there though. Swiffer looking to nail down the owl star, but the ulti is good from Newbie to keep him alive. Rides in. Oh, oh, uh oh. Goes in, but I'm not sure he wanted it. Swiper now going to chase him down. Swiffer still looking for blood. Does not have his ultimate though, so a little hard to chase. Chiefs they will take a second inhibitor. 21 and a half minutes in. Swiper rejoins the team to make sure they lock down this base. Yeah, they get two inhibitors. Radar <laughs> actually flashing because he needed to last hit it. And Ejim's now caught as well. 1v2 right now. This could now. take a while. Help coming. Swiffer's here. It's all a ruse. Ejim puts up the W. That's enough movement speed to get away. Another good chain from Swiffer. Should disengage, but Nautilus Ejim, will... you're on your own. Ready to go. He certainly is. Flash rock ready for pride. Does he land it? Swiper top lane actually going to be a big threat here. If ISG continue to chase... They As are. a result, they can't. <laughs> oh, they are? Have a look at How your video. How get away? <laughs> Swiffer leading them on a wild goose chase. Oh, no. Yeah, he's just having fun now. Clayton probably he doesn't want to be there. Locked down. Lance just by popped. Swiffer with another chain. Locks him down. He needs to go back in, though. Oh, wow. That Q did so much damage. I think he ignited. No, he didn't. It just did a lot of damage. Auto Q, boom. Yeah, that was Morello's I was looking at. Wow, Swiffer. <laughs> you calm down. Well, no calm this game. Chiefs, full high feed. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Nice. Right lies Crystal Scepter. All right. Standard the blog. <laughs> oh, no, no. Speaking of standard items, have a look at Swiper. He's a bit angry. <laughs> Ginsu's Raid Blade Trundle. I actually love it. Very angry man. Angry troll. Troll man. Angry troll man. Well, unfortunately, split pudding doesn't work as well when most of the base is dead. But Chiefs are looking for another inhib here. Swiper will stay group with his team. Pride not too tanky right now, especially versus LeBlanc. He has no magic resist right now. Yeah, not I even an Aegis. Still looking though. Oh, see ya. Back to the fountain you go. And the Chiefs now grouped up. I'm going to try and force a fight here. Last inhib left. Ready going to take it down. And that's the pill up. Pride could be in trouble. Swiffer dives in, but does not overcommit? Does bait them in, though, but Newbie's in. Ejim puts up the W to try and keep them out. And the ultis are down for Alistar. He's pretty tanky. They're calling out for Lucian, but Raidy just wants to finish things off. Does get hooked up, though, but Pride now has to flash out of the way. Swiffer straight into the back line as Raidy barely lives. And the Chiefs looking to end this game very swiftly. Nexus now exposed. Yeah, Nexus open. Chiefs, they've got the minion wave there to crash down. Isaris Gaming are holding on for dear life. And it's a battle against the minions. The Chiefs are letting this happen. The plot twist. They're going to wait. He's going to try and find a window in. Swiper is smashing EMP, though. Takes him out pretty much solo, 1v3. Swiffer Legendary takes out. Alstar was peeling off for the rest of them. Pride's going to go down as well. It's an absolute bloodbath, this game. He's going to clean things out. Pad those stats for one last time. And then take him out, Chiefs. The tournament ends here, but it does end in style with a big win to finish things off. Yeah, already the Chiefs were eliminated before this game actually started. And with reckless abandon, the Chiefs, they come in, 
And it could have gone either way when they were playing how they were, but with style, they find themselves that victory. And they put themselves above Isterus Gaming on the standings. And you know what? That's pretty much all they could have asked for from that spot. It is nice, but it is uh, a consolation, and that's what we know it is for the Chiefs. Unfortunate for them, Oceania will not be continuing their run in this tournament and unable to make a top four. Seemed like we had a chance at that at some point, Rusty, but the Chiefs just couldn't quite finish out those last games today. They lost to Dead FM, which they played excellently, by the way. Just not enough. Yeah, and honestly, to me, it's just the rest of the teams that showed up at this tournament stepped up on the last day. INTZ from Brazil actually looked phenomenal in their first game. They played against Supermassive. They'll be playing again later to see if they can cement that fact and send a statement to the teams they're going to be playing. But the Chiefs, they played the same style. I didn't really see the same adaptation from these guys. The, draft, the drafts were different yep. every single day. They were learning, but they weren't learning at the same rapid pace that everyone else was. I almost find it a bit weird that they just sort of went away from what really worked for them, right? Like, they had the engage comps. They sort of figured it out before all the other teams could just play to, you know, effectively win mid-game and then snowball the game from there. And then I think maybe trick themselves. Like, against Saigon Jokers, I feel like they tried to outclass them and just got beaten by brute force. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Like, this whole tournament just came down to fundamentals. Like, everyone's yeah. just playing crowd control. They're just team fighting and they're brute forcing their way through. Draft is only part of that battle. And whilst you can play this delicate and really intricate team composition, you can execute on it. If you still make it to late game, they're still going to brute force you. They're still going to team fight you. And that was where it really went down. They just executed better. Well, we'll have to see how that all works out because uh, strong looking stuff there in the end for Chiefs. You know, it did look pretty good to sort of center things around. I do have to say though, the rest of the teams are looking good. And let's talk a little bit about top four because we do have that to consider with the rest of things moving out now. Uh, top four teams, I think you're right. They've definitely got more consistent and the days goes on. Four days of group stage is quite a lot there in the round robin, but it does make sense that we have, you know, four very strong looking teams who have played consistently throughout the tournament make it there. Yeah, absolutely. Like super massive. They started off as like the team to beat essentially with hard random. They're the ones that are only now showing signs of faltering and I'm not sure if it's them showing signs of faltering or if it's the Brazilian side INTZ showing signs of improvement. But even the Saigon Jokers have taken them down. So honestly, we look at the top four. They are the most consistent teams. They're the most deserving of their positions and all of my commendations to them for actually making it to that position. But still, there's a dynamic within that top four of actual differences. Well, Chiefs, unfortunately, we'll have to bow out of the tournament there. But again, a nice game to end things off. Rusty is always what could have been. And unfortunately for the Chiefs, it just wasn't to be this tournament. The reverse OS was not... We couldn't do it. We usually we do well on day one. Instead, we had an abysmal day one. It looked like we were bringing it back. Mind game. But cursed either way, it seems like. Yep. <laughs> Just cursed in general. And I mean, I do want to say every region at this tournament has gotten better as yes. well. That's the really cool thing to me is we've gone from IWCI to a year later being at the next IWCI and it feels like everyone has improved. It's just that some more rapidly than others as an example, which is why they're in the top four. Certainly is and it's been great to see how strong a lot of these teams have gotten. There's some exciting matches certainly to be played. Hard to say exactly where the who the favourites are looking for now. I can't to look past hard random perhaps as we'll see which teams are going to keep battling through. Rusty, Early, early predictions, I know. But I know you're not going to be on the casting desk for the rest of the day. So I did get to ask you, who would you pick for a favorite looking at that top four now that we have locked it in? I think it depends on the rest of today. Okay. If INTZ actually perform in their last game, I'm going to go with them. If it's not them, then I'm going with Hard Rain. Well, quick one there, but we will, of course, get those later. Don't forget those still group status to play. We'll see how the rest of the teams are looking out. As we come back, I do see how Brown Robin will return. <laughs>